Hey, hey Wes. Dinner. What do you got? Can you help me out here real quick? Yeah. yeah. So this looks like the uh, patch test kit that I just got in from Hypro. You know Hypro Filtration. Yeah, Hypro. That's a the company that make obviously a lot of filters, mm -hmm. a lot of different products related to that patch test kit. That's, yeah. That's naturally make this as well. So. This is a really great kit, you know, to do some oil analysis on site. You know, most sure. people do oil analysis in a laboratory, sending samples off, you know, every month or so. And that way you can do, you know, look at particles, the, the contaminants, contaminants, wear, wear debris. debris. I mean, the patch test is, is really a, a test that punches above its weight. Yeah. I mean, this is one that you can tell a lot about what's going on. So, I mm -hmm. mean, if you're seeing maybe wear debris in your regular analysis or you're noticing the machine's not running right, this is a test for yeah. a quick turnaround. Yeah, you right? can't wait those several days or who knows how long it'll be until you get that data. And looking at a microscope, this allows you to look at it and a microscope and check exactly what you're looking at. I mean, this is a quick turnaround. Yeah. All right, so what do we got? So we got miscellaneous things here, some tubing, some tubing of course. Tubing, yeah, obviously some mm -hmm. some paper to where you could write your patch test yeah. and everything. So they got some bottles. This is like the waste bottles uh, they sure. might have, yeah. Um, and, you know, of course, the main component here is the funnel itself. So this mm -hmm. funnel is what you'll attach to a vacuum sampler. Um, you can put the perforated material or component right here that allows you to put the patch right on top so of it. So the patch goes yeah. on top of this, mm -hmm. it threads together. That basically keeps the patch from being damaged yeah, or otherwise sucks through that, the sample. Mm -hmm. So let's hold that for a yeah. second. I'm going to get the vacuum sampler. And so. that's that's better than a lot of like the plastic ones that I've seen. Yeah, that, that'll too. last a lot longer. So let's just assemble this a little bit real yeah, quick. so that would go yeah. there right there. Pretty yeah. straightforward. And But before you actually take a sample and put it through here, you have to put a little bit of a solvent in there. So a common solvent would be like a mineral spirit. Sure, know? absolutely. Yeah. Because, I mean, if we picked a sample, right, some of these, especially if they're thick, mm -hmm. it may not go there very yeah. easily. So you do want to mm -hmm. use a solvent, kill the viscosity a little bit. Or all those down. contaminants, if it's heavily contaminated, make, make it difficult for sure. it to push through. So that helps a little bit. So I think they provided this solvent dispensing container to allow you to properly put the, the solvent in the funnel itself. But you also need one of these funnels, these uh, filter devices that you use. Yeah, that's right, because if the solvent is contaminated, mm -hmm. that's going to show up on your patch, and you won't know if it came from the solvent or the machine. Mm -hmm. So running it through a filter, you're basically removing that chance for a false positive Correct. or disrupting your data. It's really important to make sure the things that you're seeing in that patch are truly coming from the machine that's that right. represented a sample. So it's a, one of the fundamental aspects of oil analysis. Sure. And after you take a sample and push it through there, follow the procedures, there's several steps. It takes about five, 10 minutes to do mm -hmm. it. Not too bad. Um, you can then analyze it in a microscope. It looks like they sent one to, oh, the, these digital microscopes similar to yours, right? Yeah, I almost. Yeah. it looks almost identical to the one that I have. And I, I yeah. like this because it's USB, it hooks up to your computer, so you can take pictures of what you're seeing on their microscope. It has its own lights. Yeah, it's that's a really pretty great. decent mm -hmm. zoom. So it goes on the patch. Obviously, you can see the size, the shape, in some cases, even the color of the yeah. contaminants or debris that you're seeing in the patch. So yeah. that's not bad at all. Yeah, here are the patches themselves. They come in a 1.2 micron. That's typical. 1.2, I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's pretty thin. So, I mean, yeah. you're catching a lot of small stuff with yeah. that right there. But for more contaminated, you might want to use one of these 5 micron sure. patches as well. Absolutely. So. I mean, you get a sample that's you know grossly contaminated or something, you may want to yeah. run a bigger patch. Yeah, and then four steps as well. You gotta carefully take that patch out, you know, make sure you place it on a on a piece of paper or something, you know, when you take a look at the microscope. Sure. Obviously a pretty robust kit. I mean, looking at this, I mean, is there anything that you'd add to this? You know what? I'm glad you asked because I I, you know, I like using the Durbin method, which is where you use a magnet, this magnet like this. You know this. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So you take your sample mm -hmm. and you put it on there. And this keeps the ferromagnetic particles, draws it, draw it down, holds it down. So as you pour the fluid through the funnel, it keeps those on there. And then the second patch, so you do this twice, you actually remove the ma magnet and it'll keep those particles that are attached to the magnet. So the first mm -hmm. first patch is going to be, you know, contaminants, dirt, debris, stuff like that. And let's say that this sample came from a worm gear. It'd yeah. be like the brass and yeah. bronze in the first patch. Yeah. Now we move that away, replace the patch, the second one. Now you get the iron. Everything ferrous, mm -hmm. everything iron. So, so this will now go through there and you have two different patches to compare non-ferrous and ferrous or all sure. the uh, you know, softer materials as well. Absolutely. Now, I mean, obviously the, the procedure of the patch test isn't overly complicated, mm -hmm. but looking at the results, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can be looking at. Softer materials, hard particles, wear debris of different types. I like to use reference materials all the time when I'm looking at these, these patches. And there's a lot of great books out there. I have some good books on my you know, bookshelf upstairs. 
um, or just a lot of online material to kind of get better and better and better. And as you do this over time, you really start developing a skill of when to notice what these striations might mean, if it came from you know, adhesive wear, abrasive wear, fatigue wear, and kind of you know, hone in those skills. So. Sure. And like you're saying, you're looking at the fine detail of the particles. Mm -hmm. That's one of the great things about the, the microscope taking a picture of that. Yeah. Because then you can visually show it to management yeah. and really get some Show buy that change. That's yeah. exactly That's it. a great idea. So for more information, follow the link below. Yeah.